I'm looking for a natural pain reliever, something that's used in skin care, something that can be used to dye clothes, heck, something that could be an anti-venom for a king cobra bite. Am I crazy? No. Turmeric, the main ingredient in yellow curry and the big flavor in my beef stew with cauliflower dumplings. I'm Chef Michael Williams and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Today, we're looking at a twist on a comfort food standard. It's stew and something dumplings. The stew is Island Pastures beef, yam, and coffee, and the something is a cauliflower-based dumpling. You know I love my cauliflower. Let's get right to it. Okay, we're gonna start this off with brewing some coffee. Coffee is actually gonna be the liquid in this stew. So I've got my French press ready to go, some hot water, some beautiful level ground medium and lovely as they've rebranded here their flavors. So this is like a light kind of bright coffee, uh, wonderful flavor. You don't want something too dark because it's gonna add too much bitterness to our stew. So a nice bright and floral coffee is best. So we'll get this brewing and we'll set that aside and then we're gonna get started on our beef. Now, if you wanna make the most amazing stew, you gotta get the right beef. Sometimes just standard stew beef that you're gonna buy already pre-prepared for you isn't going to, you know, it's not gonna yield you the most tender stew. What does is a beef shoulder blade roast and you process it yourself. That guarantees a super tender and delicious beef. So I'm gonna grab mine from the fridge. So as mentioned, we've got some Island Pastures beef here. Vancouver Island raised, grass fed, grass finished. Now this is a beef shoulder blade roast. And then the first step is just to kind of get rid of a little bit of the extra fat. Um, if we don't do that, we're gonna end up with the fat rendered into our stew and it's gonna be too greasy. The lovely thing about the grass-fed, grass-finished beef is it's typically leaner than grain-fed. So we're already, uh, you know, ahead of the game. So, as I cut into this, I'm just looking to get rid of the big chunks of fat. So, you know, it may, may be easiest for you just to kind of start by breaking it down into manageable sections. And you can always cut right along the line of where that fat is to get easier access to it. Okay, we don't need to do, go too crazy because it is that connective tissue and everything else that really gives us the rich flavor and wonderful consistency of this stew. All right, so I'm gonna cube this now. And we want nice big chunks because it's gonna be so tender it's gonna melt in our mouth anyways. This is gonna be fantastic. This is my favorite way to do stew. Another option you can do actually is instead of cutting it up, you can make your stew, the liquid, brown this off first, which is what we're gonna do. I should get my pan heating up here. But you can place the whole roast into the liquid of the stew and just braise it. And then afterwards, shred it. It's an amazing trick. And you end up with a little bit of a different texture in the meat because it's you know pulled instead of cubed. So let's go ahead and set our beef aside. And once we've got our beef set aside, I'm gonna get rid of my board here. I like to keep my you know, meat board separate from my beautiful veggie board. Time to wash up. Make sure you get that good happy birthday in there, at least 20 seconds with a good rinse. The good rinse is key to keeping your hands clean. So next step is to get that beef rolling. In our dish, we wanna get a nice little bit of a sear on that, caramelize it and brown it. I'm gonna add some coconut oil to our pot. Now it's time to get our beef right in there. So it is kinda key that you don't overload whatever vessel you are making your stew in. I've got a nice wide base here, and by using a nice wide base, I can fit most of my meat in. While that is browning, let's get started on our veggies. We're gonna start off with some red onion, and you can't have a stew without garlic. I don't think it's possible. So I want a nice large dice on this. So I'll, as per usual, cut off the top and the bottom and cut my onion in half. It doesn't really matter. It's not too key that it's symmetrical. So just chop it up. I love rustic and stew is all about rustic. So with our garlic here, I like to implement the use of a nice heavy pot so I can break that whole bulb down and that helps us get peeled. Now let's take a look at our meat. I think it's ready for a turn. 
Nice cast iron pot here, great way to go. Stainless steel also works. We're just looking for some nice color on there. So let's get about, uh, you know, six, seven cloves and we'll chop those up and we can get our veggies going into the pan as well. One more good one. These are a good size. I like the size of these cloves, so I think we're good with five. Okay, and then just a rough slice is all I'm after here. I love big chunks of garlic in my stew and when I'm digging in. That is now ready. We've got, you know, we've got a good head start on our beef here. It's browning nicely. Let's go ahead and get the veggies going as well. The onion's ready to go in. And one last vegetable that we can brown off is some celery. So I've got some celery sticks here, three of them will do the trick. And I'm just, once again, gonna rough chop. Nice big chunks. Stew is a rustic, beautiful dish. And you can even use some of those leafy ends. That's a great, uh, great thing to take advantage of, as long as there's not too many. We'll get those into the pot. We're now ready to season this. Actually, even more important, we're ready to press our coffee. So we're gonna go ahead and get this pressed. We don't wanna overbrew it. Four and a half minutes is kind of your ideal window for a nice French press. Let us now pour our coffee off into this cup. Oh man, I wanna drink this. At least I'll get to enjoy that coffee flavor in a little bit. Let's take a look at our stew here, give it a bit of a stir. All we need to do now is get our spices in and then quickly chop up some yam. So a couple teaspoons of each turmeric, ancho chili powder and salt. That was a one and a half teaspoon grab. There's the half. And then some cranks of fresh ground pepper. About half as much fresh ground pepper as all the other spices. Okay, and what we wanna do is we wanna stir that in and just get a bit of a, you know, a saute on those spices. It really livens them up, brightens them up, and electrifies the smell in the room. We're ready to get our coffee in there. In the end, we need about two cups, which leaves just enough for me to have a sip. And because that coffee is strong, we're also gonna add a little bit of water into the mix. So I've got about half as much water, which I'm gonna add. We're gonna bring that back up to a simmer, get the lid, let it do its thing. And because this is beef shoulder blade, you know, it takes a little while to cook. So it's kind of like, you know, hour and a half kind of a deal till it gets nice and tender. Uh, and this yam, I'm gonna chop this up. That's gonna go in, leave the skin on. That's gonna go in. We'll put that in probably for the last 25 minutes. And hey, we're gonna be back a little bit later to pull things together for our stew and something dumplings. But before that, we're out of here on the road. See you right after the break. Cooking on the Road is brought to you by Cold Star Solutions, an integral part of Vancouver Island's grocery supply chain for 20 years. We're here on a wet but beautiful day in the Alberni Valley at Bairdale Farm with the owner, George Hack. How's it going, George? Very good, thank you. Farmer for what, your whole life? Basically, yeah, yeah. last 50 years. And uh, this farm has been in the family since your dad? 69. 69. Yeah, we did dairy for 27 years. Okay and got out of that in 2000 and since then we've been into beef. And so you guys are part of Island Pastures Beef and you supply your beef to Country Grocer, they're grass-fed, grass-finished cattle, right? Correct, yeah. And so, you know, grass-fed, I love my grass-fed beef and the reason I love it, it's super lean, it's tasty, really nutritious, it's got a great fat profile. Can you expand on that? Well, in feeding mostly Angus cattle, they do very well on grass. Yeah. Yeah, they're and a little shorter. Yeah. Not as bony, not as tall, but they put on a lot of weight. Yeah, and uh, get great, you know, fat profile, omega threes, right in beef, which yeah. which seems like, hey, I'm eating fish, but no, this very is very healthy. Yeah, yeah, very healthy. Yeah, yeah. Keep our kids growing; they're getting bigger than me. Right. I'm bigger than dad. <laughs> so uh, you've been doing this for for a long time. You like what you do? I do. Yeah. yeah long yeah. days, I imagine. Well, yeah, but it's uh, I get to walk to work. I don't have any traffic except for 
taking you on umbrella to work on a day like this, right? Which isn't so bad. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I, I mean, the landscape, the view, it's just spectacular here. Even on a foggy, rainy day, I can just see the striking beauty of the land. It must be uh, a great place to live. I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah great place to raise a family and kids. And so you start off the cattle, from what I understand, and then they move on to a different property, different pasture. Yeah, it, it makes my life a lot easier if I, rather than having to finish the animals. Otherwise, I have to have two separate groups of cattle. This right. way, I just have the, the cows that have the calves, and before the cows calve again, I'll sell the calves to other guys in the, in the island pastures. Yeah and uh, they'll finish them. Okay, and, yeah. and that's all here on Vancouver Island. So yes. they start here on your farm and then move to Parksville or Black Creek at right. one of the other farms. Yeah. There's, there's about eight of us that uh, supply beef to country to, grocer yeah. through Island Pastures. For me as a chef, I love when food comes close to home yes. and to know that you know the cattle's just up the island here a little bit, that's, that's well, a great feeling. Nice to be able to feed ourselves. Yeah, you know. especially these days. Well, the island used to produce in the late 50s, about nine, over 90% of its food. Right, they yeah. We're way down from that. So uh, I, I think uh, we should all make it our mission to support local and, and start bringing those roots back to the way they used to be. Would you agree? I would agree, yeah. yeah. I might get my grandkids back out on the farm. George, thank you so much. This has been an absolute pleasure. Learn so much about your process here on the farm. And I'm going to keep cooking my grass-fed beef because I love it. Well, that's great, and I hope you can teach me how to cook it properly. Hey, well, check out the show. <laughs> I will. And uh, check out those recipes, and absolutely. I Thank certainly will. Thanks so much, George. Thank Thank you. It's back to our kitchen. We're pulling together our twisted stew and something dumplings. Island pastures beef, yam, and coffee stew with the something, the spiced cauliflower based dumplings. So let's go ahead and make a totally different kind of dumpling. So I'm gonna get the cauliflower started here. I wanna remove the core and break this up into florets. So just remove that center core a little bit, which will give you access to breaking this down. And then what we wanna do is break these florets down into a small size because we want to roast them in the oven and we want to dry them out really well. Uh, we want to get as much moisture out of them as we can. Just go ahead and bust this up a little bit. And you know, the smaller they are, the quicker they will cook. We're going to roast them at a nice high temperature. We'll get some caramelization happening. Let's just set these aside for now because I actually do have some cauliflower done and ready to go. So these will create a batch for us another day. In the meantime, beauty, this is looking perfect. Nicely caramelized, roasted, and dried out. Now, if you don't have one of these, you know, perforated air fry pans, that's fine. Just use a regular baking sheet. Let's go ahead and process our carrot. So I'm gonna peel this up and dice. We're basically gonna blitz this all up in the food processor anyways. But because the carrot is so dense and hard and our cauliflower now especially is nice and soft, we're gonna go ahead and give a bit of a semi-fine dice on this. Now we are almost ready to blitz this up. This is a super simple recipe. All it is is cauliflower, carrots, egg, and spices. A Little bit of cilantro, some olive oil to keep it moist. So let's go ahead and get our cauliflower in to the food processor. Those have cooled down fairly quickly, which is great, because we don't want them too hot when we get our egg in there. Okay, we'll go ahead and get uh, carrots into the food processor. So we've got our cauliflower, our carrots. Let's go ahead and crack an egg into the food processor. Just one egg and then some seasoning and some cilantro and some olive oil. And then we're gonna bind things up with the uh, garbanzo bean flour, also known as chickpea flour. So a little bit of some cayenne pepper. I'm gonna be careful with the cayenne because it is potent. A couple shakes of that into the food processor. Turmeric, I'm gonna be a little bit more heavy handed. And we'll put a teaspoon of that, half a teaspoon, depending on how you like it, and got some toasted and ground coriander seed here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cilantro now, and I'm just gonna break off a chunk of our leaves. Keep it like flowers, and it'll last a while on the counter. It's a great way to hold on to your, 
your fresh herbs. So we're ready to blitz this up now. I'm gonna go ahead and process. Just gonna pulse it. I don't wanna grind it too fine. Let's see how that's looking. Okay, just a touch more. So I'm gonna grab myself a spatula, wipe the edges down and give it a couple more pulses. That should do it. Let us go ahead and finish this off. I'm gonna get the blade out of there and I'm just gonna use the bowl to finish mixing it. I'm gonna put a touch of extra virgin olive oil in there. And then we're gonna definitely need, you know, two tablespoons to about a quarter cup of this chickpea flour. So I'll start off with a couple tablespoons and we'll see how that texture is. We just wanna make sure that those dumplings can kinda of hold together a little bit. And by giving this a stir, I can see that, yeah, it's still probably a little bit wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of that chickpea flour. Okay, and once you think you can form your, your shapes here, we're just gonna do this by hand and drop them into our hot frying pan. So I'm gonna start off and get a little bit of coconut oil into the pan. Any high heat oil will do. Coconut oil, grapeseed oil, avocado oil. And what we'll do is just kinda, you can use a cookie scoop for this, by the way. We're just gonna shape some rough forms here and right into the pan they go. And we'll pan fry them. You can actually line these up on a baking sheet and bake them as well. And I'm kinda making falafel-ish shapes here. So we're gonna have little, uh, you know, triangle, tri-sided dumplings. You know what I just realized? I forgot to put salt into my mix, which is, you know, not ideal. It's not the best. So I'm just going to make sure that I season these liberally in the pan. Sometimes I make mistakes too, just like everybody else. And sometimes you just got to roll with it. What I could do is absolutely season the rest of that. But for these guys that are already in the pan, I can add a little bit of seasoning. I've got my Vancouver Island sea salt here, so I'll season nicely on the outside of each of these. So once we think we've got a nice brown edge, we're ready to flip onto the first side. Oh yeah, check that out. Beautiful. Our stew, as I mentioned, is ready to go. Check this out. Here's the unveiling. Ready? Ready? Ready for it? Oh yeah, that looks fantastic. And we'll give this a stir. Smells incredible, looks fantastic. The coffee, the yam, the spices. This is a really, just a delicious stew. I love it, it's one of my faves. So that, we'll need nothing more than a little bit of fresh herb to garnish it up. Let's get the next flip on the rest of our dumplings here. And as you know, the, the temperature rises on these dumplings, that egg kind of just sets everything in place. Very rustic as you can see. Just get a little bit of a chop on this cilantro here, just a rough chop. If you're not down with cilantro, go ahead and use parsley. You could do a basil chiffonade as well. Finely chopped chives are wonderful. And we're ready to finish this off. I'm just gonna line my plate up here. And because these are cauliflower, hey, I'm gonna go to town. Yeah, baby. There you have it. Nice fresh cracked pepper all around. Beautiful. This dumpling, it's not gonna fit, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and just eat it now. Let's have a little taste of this as well, that nice coffee base. Mm, so good. There you have it. Island Pastures beef and coffee stew with cauliflower dumplings, our stew and something dumplings. Pairings are brought to you by Liquor Plus. Discover the plus. Now to make this dish even better, let's explore a beverage pairing. We're here with Wade from Marydale Cider. Welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Yeah, great. Thank you. So I kind of you know, gave you some details on what I was going to prepare today. Uh, a beef and yam stew with a coffee base and turmeric flavors popping out of yeah. there. 
made some cauliflower falafel, cauliflower dumplings to go with it. Uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, on how to pair this up? Yeah, well, so I brought one of our uh, ciders. It's the uh, Sizer uh, from Meridale. It's uh, honey added from okay. uh, from honey actually up on the orchard up in Meridale. So nice. yeah, I thought with a little bit of that honey sweetness might pair up nice with the, what you got going on there. Sounds good yeah. to me. So it's it's you know a, a it's Meridale apple. apple cider. Yeah, but, but sweetened a little bit with some some it, honey right from the farm. Right from the farm, exactly. Right on. Yeah. So yeah, That's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm excited. I, I love Meridale. Fantastic. Kind of one of the staples on the island here. Yeah. Right? Cheers. Thanks. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I think with all the yams and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, so let's uh, l let's dig into our food here and, and see how this combination really comes together. Yeah, sounds good. Coffee, yam, beef, and then we follow it up with a little bit of sweetness and apple. Works for me. So hits the spot pretty totally. good. Totally, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Loving it. So what's new with Marydale? Yeah, so we kind of switched a, a couple of things. Uh, we were, last time I was here, we were switching a, a bit of the format. So we've moved um, some of our core lineup and some of our seasonals in the tall cans now. Okay, um, yep. And then uh, with like the sizer and our scrumpy, we moved that into a larger, uh, up to a 750 milliliter glass uh, format. Right on. And then we're still doing our, um, our uh, non-pasteurized stuff that we do put in like our the plastic bottles in the one liter. Yeah. Um, again, that requires refrigeration, so we mm -hmm. we, we uh, maintain it in the in the plastic, so it allows for a little bit of expansion, a little bit of room the in case there's a happens, fermentation right? yeah, or something. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's a really nice pure product that way. So cool. Yeah. It's really well, good. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm loving this combo. What do you think? You. Uh, I you think know? it was. Uh, I think I might have done all right. Same with you. I think so too. <laughs> Wade, man, <clears throat> thank you so much for coming down. Yeah. Once again, you nailed it. Check out our website where you'll find the lowdown and the recipe on today's show. I'm Michael Williams. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, dinner's better when we eat it together.